Of all the amazing things an automobile can do, drifting is easily one of the most spectacular to watch. You hear the roar of the engine getting louder and louder as the car barrels down the track. And for a split second, silence. Suddenly you hear and feel the engine forcing out every drop of power it has, the tires screaming, and the car whips sideways into a gorgeous, controlled drift. So what's going on inside the car? What makes them slide? I'm Soda Pop, and here's how a drift car works. So first things first, a drift car for the most part needs to be rear wheel drive with a manual transmission. This isn't always the case, but for the purpose of this episode, we're gonna focus on the standard rear wheel drive drift car. Typically when racing, the goal is to get as close to braking traction as possible without actually braking traction. You wanna be able to pull through a turn as fast as you can without your tires losing their grip to the asphalt. Drifting is a little different. The art originated in the mountains of Japan these roads are filled with extremely tight turns that would typically require a car to slow down considerably. The idea was that rather than having to slow down and maintain traction, a driver could intentionally break the grip of the tires and throw the rear end of their vehicle around a corner while still maintaining speed. This practice over time drew the interest of millions across the world. Not only is it effective, it's a gorgeous act to watch. The science of a proper drift car has evolved considerably over the years. They've become precisely engineered, well-tuned machines built for one purpose, drifting. Obviously, to break the tires loose and to maintain that wheel spin, drift cars have to have a lot of power. From big American V8s to turbocharged four-cylinders, a driver needs to be able to deliver a steady flow of power in the rear wheels. Go to any drift event and you'll find a lot of Chevy's 5.7 liter LS1s, very common swaps in drift cars. However, when building it, you want to be sure not to push too much weight into the front of the car. A drift car needs to have a relatively well-balanced front to rear weight ratio. If there's too much weight in the front, it'll be difficult to hold the rear end out for very long without regaining traction. If there's too much weight in the rear, the car will be snappy and hard to maintain when sliding. There are a few ways to induce a slide, but the most common of which is by pulling the magic wand of drift, the handbrake. Most modern drift cars are equipped with a hydraulic handbrake. This is basically a lever connected to a fluid-filled cylinder. When the handle is pulled, it compresses the liquid in the cylinder, creating pressure. The pressure is transferred through the hollow lines to the rear brakes, causing them to compress and lock up the rear wheels. Another important factor in drifting is the clutch. For those unfamiliar with how a manual transmission works, a clutch basically connects the engine to the transmission. When the left pedal is pressed down, the clutch is disengaged. The engine is still running, but none of the power is making it to the transmission, and therefore the wheels. To start a drift, a driver will sharply turn the steering wheel, stomp the clutch pedal, and pull the handbrake. For this split second, the car is whipped into a slide, moving solely under the power of pure inertia. The driver will then give the car gas, causing the engine to generate massive power. With perfect timing, you'll have to release the handbrake, allowing the wheels to spin again and quickly let off the clutch. This influx of power causes them to spin furiously, giving you the power to hold the slide. Now, keep in mind, all of this happens in the blink of an eye. It's a very delicate process that must be perfectly executed. Doing so in a screaming vehicle moving sideways at high speed requires a lot of practice and skill. Which is why the most important part of a drift car is, in fact, the driver. Realistically, you can, in a sense, drift any manual rear-wheel drive car out there. But we're not talking about just sliding your car around a parking lot, which, admittedly, we're all a little guilty of. A proper drift car needs an adjustable suspension. A driver needs stiff springs and shocks, and the ability to lower the vehicle, which, in turn, lowers the center of gravity, giving you better, more reliable handling. Ever notice how the front wheels on a lot of drift cars are tilted in at the top? This is because of the insane forces these cars are subjected to. When the car is thrown sideways into a drift, the weight of the vehicle will roll onto the tire, forcing the rubber into the ground, giving it maximum grip. While the whole point of drifting is to lose traction, it's important that the front wheels are as planted as possible in order to maintain steering control. The chassis of the car takes a beating from this sport. The car is constantly being thrown from side to side while fighting against the friction from the tires to the ground. The roll cage of a drift car doesn't only serve to protect the driver, it also does an excellent job of strengthening the chassis to handle such harsh movements by replacing empty cabin space with heavy duty metal bars. And let's not forget the differential. A differential takes the spinning energy from the drive shaft and splits it between the rear axles. 
Typically, the driver and passenger side wheels spin at different rates during a turn due to the inside wheel traveling a shorter distance. This is achieved through the diff, which, through a series of gearing, distributes the necessary amount of power to each side of the car. Automobiles will come with either an open differential or a limited slip differential, or LSD for short. An open diff will transfer engine power to whichever wheel requires less force to spin. A limited slip diff, on the other hand, won't allow one wheel to spin significantly faster than another. So rather than leaving two pretty black tire marks when doing a burnout with an LSD, an open diff will often surrender the power to one spinning wheel after it breaks loose. So obviously, drifters would prefer the even power distribution of the limited slip diff. But unfortunately, like most fun things, they're pretty expensive. So many turn to just welding their open diff, meaning the wheels are always turning at the same speed. This means that during any turn, one wheel is effectively being dragged across the pavement. This will make some embarrassing noise, and it will shorten tire life on a streetcar. But hey, it's a drift car, bro. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the left pedal. We come out with new cool car stuff almost every week, from animated videos like this one to car reviews to our own personal builds. Uh, I'm Soda Pop, this is the left pedal, and I'll see y'all next time.